Hello everyone, this is Robert, and this is the new drive for Copperhead. In this video, I'm going to be building the last and final one with these pieces, so let's go take a look at the new drive. So I'm going to start off by showing you a finished module. This is what it looks like. And really all it is is a cage for the motor. The motor just kind of sits inside of this thing. We have um, some nylon standoffs. Um, we have a plate on the back to hold the rear of the can so it doesn't wobble all over the place. And then we have one, two, three mounting points. These mount to the actual frame of the robot. So yeah, there's not a whole lot to it, but there's a couple little tips and tricks on the inside. So let's just go ahead and start the assembly and I'll show you everything as I go. Before we do all the assembly, we should talk about the motors first. This started out its life as a Maytech 8085 and has gone through a couple little modifications and improvements. Most notably is the shaft itself. If you've been watching my channel, you've probably been seeing some things about this. This is a solid one-piece shaft with a flange on the back. Um, this is all made out of 4140 steel. We've got a hex on one end and then this flange with the five holes on the back. And as you can see, it mounts to the back of the motor right there. This is actually a two-piece. Um, we have two versions of this. This is just for the backup. Mounts directly into the can of the motor. The motor has actually been machined down so that it can have this um, bearing support at the end of it. And then we have a hex on the other side. In addition to the new shaft, this motor is also fully battle hardened. Um, you can see these sensors here. We have um, epoxy all around the sensors, all along the stator, and then also inside the motor can on all the magnets so that when it goes smash smash, these things don't explode all over the place. The mount consists of these two aluminum pieces. I actually made these on my Avid CNC router and um, they're just spray painted. It has a red spray paint and then some satin clear coat over top of that because why not, right? This piece is where the motor face actually sits inside like that. And um, we have a couple TPU bushings. So this one bushing is for the face of the motor. It sits in like that. So it just sits inside of there and the motor will actually mount against that. And it allows it so that the motor can shift around just a little bit and it has a little bit of cushioning so it's not just metal on metal. And then the back, you can see I already have the bearing mounted, but we have these uh, large bearings that sit on the end of the can like that. And then there is a ring of TPU along there as well. So this is the ring that it sits inside. So the bearing just kind of presses inside. And this also adds another level of shock mounting. So the whole idea is that when the motor is sitting in its little comfy cocoon, it will have a little bit of um, isolation from all of the metal that is surrounding it. There's a pretty critical first step, which is putting this little button head screw in, which kind of keeps falling out. This button head actually attaches to the frame and the tolerance was just so close. I think it's only 10 thousandth of an inch away from the motor that you got to put it in first and it kind of sits recessed beneath the can. So once you get that in there, put in the TPU sleeve, now you can attach the motor pretty standard stuff. There's just four screws, loctite and that will hold the motor against that TPU sleeve and then against that front mounting frame. Now we can just uh, set the back side on, which has the bearing on it, and add the standoffs. I'm unfortunately using these spacers because I didn't get the spacing on everything right. Um, the can ended up being just a little bit taller than I thought, but that's when we can put in these nylon um, standoffs and then just screw everything down. I'm screwing everything down tight first, and then I'll take them out individually one by one add Loctite, and then put them back in. I like doing it this way because these two pieces need to be really parallel, so you kind of want to tighten the whole thing together, get it where you want, and then just replace each screw one by one.
The reason that we're using nylon standoffs instead of aluminum or steel or something else is this can will actually flex quite a bit on big hits and the can will actually slam against these standoffs. There's only about, I think, 20 thousandth of an inch clearance between the can and the standoffs and that's definitely by design. We actually want the can to deflect and then deflect into the nylon and the nylon will be a much more forgiving surface than a metal standoff. And there you go, that's all there is to it. As you can see, we have a left side and a right side. These parts are perfectly mirrored. I typically don't like doing mirrored parts because it means that you have to basically build twice as many parts, if that makes sense. These aren't interchangeable, but due to the nature of the um, current design, we kind of had to do this. And here you can see the uh, wire channel that comes down. So this will just get zip tied against that. And the wire just has some nice um, channel to go down. Another interesting thing that someone might point out, these motors are uh, pretty well used and abused. You can see they have a lot of scratches on them and um, paint removed from them. What I like to do whenever I buy new parts is take two of them, use those as prototypes. So these were our prototype testers. This is what we tested the whole drive with. Now these two actually become the spares and the other four that we have are brand new and pristine and pretty. Those have never been inside the bot before. So those end up being the ones that we run and then the ones that we used for testing end up becoming the spares. Uh, so let's go take a look at what this looks like inside of the frame rail. So here is one of the drive modules attached into the frame rail. As you can maybe see, the paint is still wet on the top here and it just mounts one two and then there's another mount on the bottom so pretty simple stuff it just mounts right there an interesting thing to note is when i designed this in solidworks i basically just drew the internal cavity and then added a four millimeter offset so there's a four millimeter offset here 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 against the um, battery box or i guess on this side it's the weapon so this is the largest that this can possibly be so this is all the room that we have for the whole drive module, that's it. It's literally less than a quarter inch away from the frame, every single dimension around it, so yeah. So that's all I have for this video. Hopefully this um, and all the other videos give you a little bit better idea of all the things that we've been doing to improve the drive on Copperhead. Still got a couple more things to do, but um, we're looking pretty good for the next season. So check out the channel for any more updates to that. Check out Facebook, um, both the Copperhead Facebook and my Facebook page for any updates. And we will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.